The Orpheum Theatre opened in Champaign, Illinois in 1914 on the site of a vaudeville theatre built in 1904. Designed by the architectural firm Rap and Rap, the Orpheum, also known as the New Orpheum, was built to accommodate both live vaudeville performances and the projection of film. After a series of renovations and changes of ownership, the Orpheum screened its final film in 1986. Preserved from demolition in 1991, the Orpheum is now home to a children's museum, the Orpheum Children's Science Museum, and is undergoing restoration. Topic design and construction One of the earliest examples of movie theatre architecture, the Orpheum is an early design by the prolific architectural firm Rap & Rap, a firm that would later design many famous American movie palaces in the first decades of the 20th century. George Leslie Rapp, an 1899 alumnus of the University of Illinois School of Architecture, with his brother Cornelius, founded the firm of Rapp & Carrot Rapp. They designed over 400 theaters including the Majestic Theater in Dubuque, Iowa 1910, the Chicago Theater 1921, Bismarck Hotel and Theater 1926, Myigan Theater, Detroit 1926, Oriental Theater, Chicago 1926, and the Paramount Theater in New York City 1926, and Aurora 1931. Rapp and Rapp designed the Orpheum as a scale model of the Opera House at Versailles. The following year, they designed the Owl. Ringling Theatre in Baraboo, Wisconsin, which was also a model of the Versailles Opera House. The Ringlings, however, spent considerably more money for decorations. The Orpheum interior style is French Renaissance and Baroque and the exterior is Classical Revival. There were 754 seats and 18 Logue boxes. The owners were Joseph M. Finn and Marcus Hyman of F&H Amusement Company. General contractor was Weil Brothers of Chicago, specialists in theatre construction. The contract price was between $65,000 and $70,000. Work began in late May 1914. Mandel Brothers of Chicago had the contract for the draperies and other interior decorations. The scenery was done by Sossman and Landis of Chicago, who were considered the best scenery painters in the Middle West. Topic Early history In vaudeville opening night was on October 19, 1914. The performance began with the New Orpheum Orchestra, under the leadership of Larry J. Powers, playing the Illinois Loyalty, followed by America and the Star Spangled Banner. Mayor Oliver B. Dobbins gave a short speech complimenting the management for its elaborate and expensive effort to provide such an elegant theater. Five high-class vaudeville acts were presented, headlined by singer and comedian Herman Timbig, who had appeared a few weeks earlier at Chicago's Palace Theater. The evening closed with moving pictures. The manager was C. S. Harris. The Orpheum was the main vaudeville stop in Champaign and Urbana, and a member of the noted Orpheum circuit. It played host to many famous vaudevillians, including Trixie Friganza, Red Skelton, Harry Houdini Sheik Sale, Virginia Sale, Will Rogers 1915, The Marx Brothers 1918, Bill Bojangles Robinson 1921, Jack Benny 1922, Bob Hope 1928, and Burns and Allen 1929. A few of the now classic films shown during the Orpheum's long history include Birth of a Nation 1916, Intolerance 1917, City Lights 1931, Gone with the Wind 1940 and 1968, Dumbo 1941, A Streetcar Named Desire 1952, Mr. Roberts 1955, and A Hard Day's Night 1964. During the Orpheum's vaudeville period, part of the theater's second floor served as a boarding house, often housing African Americans at a time when local hotels practiced racial discrimination. As a cinema In the 1920s RKO Pictures began operating the Orpheum Theatre it also operated the nearby Virginia Theatre, under the management of RKO, the theatre was increasingly devoted to the screening of films, rather than to live performance in the vaudeville tradition. In 1967 a major renovation created a modern appearance by adding an aluminum facade and redoing the lobby. In 1971 GKC Theatres purchased the Orpheum, as the theatre struggled to remain profitable. In 1982 GKC leased it, as part of an attempt to recast the Orpheum as an art house. After this attempt failed, the Orpheum briefly returned to screening first-run films, before finally closing in 1986, screening the trick slasher film April Fool's Day as the theater's final showing. Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Preservation and Children's Museum. The Champagne Preservation and Conservation Association sponsored a public meeting on April 8, 1989, in response to plans to raise the now closed and deteriorating theatre. This meeting was held to gauge public interest in saving the Orpheum Theatre. The city of Champaign purchased the Orpheum and adjacent building as a site for a possible parking deck in January, 1990. The city allowed 45 Packer volunteers to spend Saturday, July 7, 1990, removing the aluminum façade to reveal the original look of the building and to assess any damage. Packer hired theatre consultant Michael Hardy to do a feasibility study of the Orpheum. He suggested, in July 1990, a children's museum as a possible use for the building. The city did not have a children's museum and there were already several successful performing arts facilities in the area. The city of Champaign raised the adjacent warehouse building in February 1991. In the fall of 1991, the theatre façade was cleaned and painted and the marquee given cosmetic repairs by Packer. The trompe l'oeil cornice reminiscent of the original was painted above the theatre entrance. In 1994 the Orpheum Children's Science Museum opened its doors to the public. The museum currently houses interactive exhibits and supports a variety of camps and clubs. The board of the museum has expressed interest in either relocation or expansion of the facility. Proposals for reuse of the facility were requested by the museum board in January 2009. However, by 2013, long-term plans for the museum involved expansion of the current facility. Topic: <laughs> Maze Project Edition. In the summer of 2014, University Laboratory High School Uni High S teacher Charlene Denos met with leading members of the museum to discuss a project that could be done in tandem with the high school. Within six months, her students materialized the initiative. As of March 2017, this edition is still visible at the museum. <laughs>